Hi, my scholars. Welcome to today's class on the axillary artery. Okay, arteries provide oxygenated blood to tissues, and this blood supply is very much important for the sustenance of every tissue. So, we're looking at the main arterial stem of the upper extremity, and that is called the axillary artery. So, by way of definition, the axillary artery is defined as the main arterial stem. of the upper limb or the main arterial trunk of the upper limb. So it is from the axillary artery that every other blood supply is derived in the upper extremity. So the branches of the axillary artery will supply some parts of the upper limb. The terminal branches of the axillary artery okay, will supply some parts of the upper limb. The axillary artery will continue at the brachial artery. The brachial artery will continue at the radial and the ulnar arteries. The radial and the ulnar arteries will form the superficial and the deep palmar arterial arches in the hand. So, and that is very, very important. So that is the main trunk that gives rise to every other blood supply in the upper extremity. That's the axillary artery. Where does it originate from? What is the origin of the axillary artery? So if you look at this diagram, we have this artery right here. This initial artery is called the subclavian artery. The subclavian artery. It's one of those arteries that we see that is arising from the convexity of the arch of the aorta. So the subclavian artery. So the subclavian artery descended, immediately it crossed the outer ball of the first rib. This is the outer ball of the first rib. Outer border of first rib. Immediately the subclavian artery crossed the outer ball of the first rib. The name changed to axillary artery. So this is the axillary artery. So the whole of this artery down here is the axillary artery and is the main arterial stem of the upper extremity. That is important. Okay, so so origin it begins as a continuation of the subclavian artery. At the outer border of the first rib. That's the origin. How about the course of this artery? How does it move? So this artery is the content of the axilla. So after it is formed, it will descend in the axilla from the apex to the base. So it descends. from the apex to base of axilla. But as it descends down the axilla, it descends along the lateral wall of the axilla. Along the lateral wall, but closer to the anterior wall than the posterior wall. Closer to the anterior wall of the axilla than the posterior wall. So why does the axillary artery descend along the lateral wall of the axilla? It's because it wants to gain access to the arm, the anterior compartment of the arm. So from the axilla, it descends along the lateral wall, closer to the anterior wall than the posterior wall, eventually it gets to the arm. Okay, so what happens there? So immediately the axillary artery crosses the lower border of the teres major. The name changes, and that's the termination of the axillary artery. Okay, so the axillary artery terminates at the lower border of the teres major. So it terminates at the lower border of teres major. So. This muscle right here is the teres major. And once it terminates at the lower border of the teres major, 
it continues as another artery. So by continuing as the brachial artery, because you are right there at the arm. So the arm is breaking. So it continues at the brachial artery. So axillary artery to brachial artery. Subclavian artery to axillary artery to brachial artery. Same artery, different names with different landmarks. All right. So next, let us look at the various parts of the axillary artery. So the axillary artery is actually divided into three parts by this interesting muscle right here. So this muscle is known as the pectoralis minor. So the pectoralis minor muscle divides the axillary artery into three parts. I would say that it was not really an intentional division because the pectoralis minor already took origin, okay, from the upper ribs and the acostochondrial junction, and it passes to go and insert, okay, at the tip of the coracoid process, on the medial aspect of the tip of the coracoid process. And the process of going to its point of insertion, it actually divided the axillary artery into three parts. So we have the parts superior to the pectoralis minor, or the parts proximal to the pectoralis minor. We call the whole of this part. We call it the first part of the axillary artery. So the first part of the axillary artery, okay? Very important. Then we have the part of the axillary artery, okay? That is behind the pectoralis minor muscle, okay? Or posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle. You call it the second part. The second part of the axillary artery. Then we have the part of the axillary artery that lies distal to the pectoralis minor muscle. This whole part right here that lies below or distance the pectoralis minor is called the third part of axillary artery. Third part of axillary artery. Very, very important. So that is the significance of the pectoralis minor. So the pectoralis minor muscle is a landmark in discussing what the axillary artery. So this bony prominence right here is going to be the coracoid process. Coracoid process. Because the coracoid process receives the insertion of the pectoralis minor muscle at its media aspect. High yield. So, up next is the branches. Arteries are very benevolent. They tend to deliver the oxygen they are carrying by giving rise to branches to tissues. So, they greet so many tissues, they supply oxygen to them, and the tissues are oxygenated. Which is very much important for metabolic activities going on in the various tissues. So, what are the branches? So we have the branches from the first part. Okay? So we have this artery running this way. This artery right there. It's coming from the first part of the axillary artery. And what is that artery called? It's called the superior thoracic artery. The superior thoracic artery of the first part. So from the first part, we have the superior thoracic artery. So from the second part of the axillary artery, we have two arteries coming up as branches on the second part. Okay, and those arteries are this artery that gave rise to four branches, and the four branches are at right angles to themselves. This artery is called the thoracoacromial artery. This artery right here is the thoracoacromial artery artery. So the thoracoacromial artery arises from the second part of the axillary artery. So right here we have the thoracoacromial artery. This artery is also called the acromiothoracic artery. Acromiothoracic artery. Very very important. Okay. Then branches from the third part. Branches from the third part. So the, the, the second branch from the second part. So the second part also gave rise to another artery. And this artery right here is called the lateral thoracic 
artery. So the lateral thoracic artery is also arising from the second part of the axillary artery. All right. Then from the third part of the axillary artery, we have three branches. Okay. So this first artery right here is called the sub scapular artery. It's the largest of the third part. So the subscapular artery. Okay. So this artery right here is called the anterior circumflex. It's having a twist, a turn. Homera artery. So the anterior circumflex Homera artery. So why is this one right here? Is the posterior circumflex Homera artery. All right. So from the third part, we have three branches. So this first branch right here is the anterior circumflex Homera artery, the posterior circumflex Homera artery, and the last one is the sub scapular artery. Very important. So there's a simple rule right here. The simple rule is the first part gives rise to one artery, second part two arteries, third part two arteries, three arteries. So the rule is rule of one, two, three. So remember the rule of one, two, three in the parts of the axillary arteries. Very, very important. So a little more notes on this arteries now. So I'll begin with the third part. So the third part of the axillary artery has three branches. The largest is the subscapular artery. The subscapular artery gives rise to an artery, okay, which winds around the lateral body of the scapula. And guess what it's called? This artery right here is called the circumflex scapular artery. This is the circumflex scapular artery. So the circumflex scapular artery, okay, passes through the quadrangular space. Passes through the quadrangular space, okay. Why the anterior circumflex humeral artery winds around the anterior aspect of the surgical neck and anastomose with the word posterior circumflex humeral artery. The posterior circumflex humeral artery winds around the posterior aspect of the surgical neck. So when there's fracture of the surgical neck, these two arteries are liable to damage. Okay? Very, very important. All right. The posterior circumflex humeral artery is also that artery that passes through the triangular space passes through the triangular space, all right? The anterior circumflex humeral artery gives an ascending branch. So it gives an ascending branch. And that ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery participates in the anastomosis around the acromion. The anastomosis around the acromion, okay? All right, so that is that. So this artery right here is called the lateral thoracic artery. So the lateral thoracic artery runs along the lower border of the pectoralis minor. It runs along the lower border of the pectoralis minor. And this lateral thoracic artery supplies the pectoralis minor and some other structures within the pectoral region. And it's a very, very important artery. So why the thoracoacromial artery, which is also called the acromiothoracic artery, runs along the upper border of the pectoralis minor. It runs along the upper border of the pectoralis minor. And once it emerges from the upper border of the pectoralis minor, it will divide into four branches that are at right angles to one another. So four branches that are at right angles to one another. Okay? So we can remember them with A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, and D. Okay, so what is A? A means the acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery. So it participates in the anastomosis around the acromion. So B means for the breast. And what do we used to remember that the breast is located at the pectoral region? So we have the pectoral branch of the thoracoacromial artery. 
Then C means clavicle. So we have the clavicular branch of the thoracoacromial artery. Okay. Then D means deltoid. So we have the deltoid branch of, of the thoracoacromial artery. So it's a very, very important artery. So it gives us four cardinal branches. All right. So then this first artery right here is called the superior thoracic artery. The superior thoracic artery emerges from the lower border of the subclavius. So an important landmark for the superior thoracic artery of the first part is the lower border of subclavius. Subclavius muscle. It emerges from the lower border of subclavius and then supplies both the clavipectoral fascia, as well as the pectoralis minor, and partly the pectoralis major muscle. Okay? So up next is the relations. So what are the relations of the axillary artery? A simple way to remember that. So relations of the axillary artery. Relations. Okay, so first, the axillary vein lies media to the axillary artery throughout its course. So axillary vein lies media to the axillary artery. throughout its course. So what other relation should you note? So other relations is simply with respect to the second part of the axillary artery. And it's a very, very simple thing to understand. So with respect to the second part of the axillary artery, the lateral cord of the brachial plexus lies lateral. With respect to second part of axillary artery, what happens here? The lateral cord of the brachial plexus will lie lateral to the second part of the axillary artery. The posterior cord of the brachial plexus will lie posterior to the second part of the axillary artery. Okay? The medial cord of the brachial plexus will lie media to the second part of the axillary artery. Okay? So, whenever clinical correlates, we can have spontaneous thrombosis of the axillary vein, we can have injury to the axillary artery, okay? We could also have a pulsation of the axillary artery can be felt in the axilla. Yeah, pulsation of the axillary artery can be felt in the axilla. Very, very important, all right? And it is the main trunk, the main arterial trunk into the upper extremity. So this muscle here is the teres major, and, it, and it's actually inserting at the medial lip of the intertubacular sulcus. This bone right here, is the humerus. So we've been able to discuss in depth the axillary artery, the branches of the axillary artery, the role of teres minor in this very important division. Thank you very much. See you next time.